Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan 22 tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a very simple tutorial for beginners. It's just about adding textures to objects and rendering them out using RenderMan 22. Um, so for all of you that don't know, this is a very important piece of the language for when you're using rendering, is to understand the difference between a texture and a material. So what we're going to be doing is applying a texture. Anything that you render will have a material, um, which is basically what the object is made out of. It's not the color. The material can have a color, but it doesn't really describe the color necessarily. It describes things like uh, the surface quality. For, for example, you have a curtain. Um, your curtain isn't made out of the color red. It is made out of cotton or some sort of fabric. So whenever you're talking about the color of something, you're talking about the texture. When you're talking about what it's made out of, you're talking about the material. So we're going to create a texture and we're going to, well, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a model. Um, now, what you also need to know for texturing is that all models that are having apl uh, textures applied to them that aren't procedural, um, don't worry about procedural if you don't know what it is at this point, all models that have a texture applied to them need to have a UV map. And all UV mapping is, is taking a 3D object and unwrapping it so the texture is one 2D plane. Um, and that will make a little bit more sense once we, we do that with this um, cube here, which is going to be very simple to work with. So what we're going to do is going to select the cube, hit UV, and uh, we're just going to do automatic. And I don't normally UV map in Maya, so if this looks weird to anyone that's more familiar with it, uh, don't blame me. I usually use 3D Coat or ZBrush. I actually have literally only UV mapped in Maya once, and here is an example of that, and it wasn't fun. So yeah, I recommend 3D Coat. Um, so yeah, we'll get this thing here. We're just going to click off it, and now that should be UV mapped. So I'm just going to hit space, and we're going to grab a different panel. Um, it doesn't matter which one at this point, and we're just going to go to panel, UV editor. So what that's done is if I hold down right click over our object and go to UV and go to UV shell, you can see that each one of those faces is now indicated by a 2D square. So what it's done is it's unwrapped this into a bunch of different squares on this 2D plane. So a UV map in Maya or anywhere else is described by these coordinates u and v so u and v doesn't actually stand for like ultraviolet it's um it's these coordinates the vertical and the horizontal and they're uh, between zero and one in either direction so we have our model unwrapped now we need to export this as an image file so we can do something to it in an image editing um, software so what we'll do is we'll go up to image uv snapshot and this is going to be where we export our file. So you can export them to wherever you like. It's best to keep it inside your current project. You can just put it in the images folder, for example. So we're just going to call this box UV. Save that. Here's your resolution. Uh, so this is 2K currently. 2K is fine. Uh, depending on what the object is and how it's going to be rendered in your scene will determine what the resolution is. If it's going to be something small that doesn't need to have a lot of detail, you probably won't have a very high texture map. It might be 512 or it might be 1024. Um, anything above 2K is going to be a little bit more heavy to render. So just bear that in mind. But that's probably not something that you need to worry about at this point if you're starting out. And um, your image format, I recommend PNG uh, because it is just going to make it slightly easier when we get to the image editor. So sorry, I also just forgot. We need to just hold down right click, click face, make sure you just click and drag all those and then click apply. And um, now that will ex have been exported. So let's open that up in Photoshop or whatever photo editing software you have. All right, so once you've opened that in Photoshop, you'll see that you've got a layer here and you can see the outlines of all the individual faces of that box. So we'll just create a new layer and we can rename this. This can be called the UV uh, map because that's what that is. Those lines are indicative of each individual face of the square. So um, that's sort of what a UV map describes. Um, and those outlines are the edges of each face. 
So this can be our texture. Um, for this example, we can just do a fill and make it any color that we want. Um, this lovely off yellow color. And if we put this below our UV map and turn that line back on, now we can see the outline a little bit clearer. So this makes it a little bit easier when you want to say, draw something on it or add texture to it, uh, add text to it. So we can just add some text. Now I can't remember which one of these faces is what, so we'll just add a couple of things on, on here. All right, so um, we'll see where all those end up. So now what we can do is we can actually save, you could overwrite uh, this existing file and we can import it that way, or you can create a new file for this. I'm just gonna overwrite um, this PNG. So before you use it as your texture, you need to make sure that you turn these black lines off. If you keep them on, they're gonna come up in the render. So we'll just hide that, save that, and then we'll jump back into Maya. All right, so we've got our box. Let's quickly add some lights in so we can actually see this thing. And we'll just use the um, Pixar dome light. That's just gonna give us 360 degrees of illumination. And then we need to select our box and we need to apply a Pixar service shader to it. So the shader is the material. So we're gonna assign that by clicking with that selected, clicking the assign shader button. And then we're gonna open up the hypershade editor and over here, we've got Pixar Surface 1. That is the one that we just created. So with that selected, we can just map that out. And then you'll see we've got a bunch of stuff referring to our material. What we're gonna be working with here is the color. So like I said, the color in this instance is actually part of the material. So we could make this material green. This material currently isn't really anything. It's like a plastic diffused sort of thing. Um, you'd have to go through and edit a bunch of these things. I'll be making tutorials in the future about um, doing this sort of stuff, or you can look at the old tutorials that I've got for 21. A lot of those are still relevant. Um, but for this example, what we want to do is create an import texture node and plug it in to where this color normally would be. So the color is going to be our UV map. So if we just go over here into the layout, hit tab and type in PXR texture, we'll get this. We want to go to our file. We've got box UV, so you can see that's a good preview of what it will be. Then with that node selected, if you hit three, it will just extend it all out so you can see all the inputs and outputs. And we've got Pixar surface here. What we want is diffuse color. So you've got the diffuse lobe and then everything below that. So diffuse gain is that one and diffuse roughness actually isn't in there by default, I don't think. No. Um, but we just want diffuse color. So what we can do is run the result RGB out into diffuse color just by clicking and dragging from that little uh, circle there. So now the color of our cube will be a um, what we created in Photoshop. So we can render that now. We do it with uh, an IPR. All right, and as you can see that I've put the uh, bottom on the top. Uh, so that's normally when you create UVs, you will have better indications of when you unwrap it as to the UV layout. But I'm not going to make a tutorial about unwrapping in UVs because that's that's a whole different school, basically. Uh, this is more about rendering, and this is for people that are starting out more than anything. Um, so we can also view this in the... Um, a couple of people have mentioned this to me. And, I, and the reason I use IPR um, separately is because I have multiple monitors, so I normally just have this off on a, one of these other monitors. Um, but you can also uh, render it in the frame here, and that way we can rotate around. So you can see I've got small robot on the bottom there, I've got fragile on the side, and I've got bottom on the top, bottom question mark. I guess it depends what part of the world you're from. Um, I'm in Australia, so technically maybe other people think it's the top. Um, yeah, so that is basically how it works. So yeah, it's all pretty straightforward. Obviously for more complex models, you have to do a lot more work with unwrapping and you have to plan your UVs out. That's why I don't really use my, I just find it a little bit clunky compared to something like 3D code, which is um, just a little bit easier to visualize. If you haven't tried 3D code out, it's either pretty cheap or free if you're only using a trial version. 
Um, I'll try and remember to leave a link in the description for that one so you could go check it out as well. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, hopefully you found it useful out there. If you have, make sure you click like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed because I do a bunch of Render Man tutorials if that's what you're currently into, um, as well as other 3D tutorials for things like ZBrush and probably 3D code at some stage, who knows. Um, so yeah, keep up to date with those. I do one or two a week at this point. Um, any questions and comments, leave them down below. I'll try to get back to you when I can. Um, other than that, I hope you enjoy this one. And until next time, happy rendering.